All right, so good afternoon. A couple of y'all asked for some more applications of derivatives and extrema. So I want to walk through these, and we are going to be talking more about this this upcoming week. So here is a very good prime example. You've done one similar to this in your high school algebra and college algebra classes. Suppose you have a land that is adjacent to your back to the back of your house in the shape of a rectangle. You're going to divide your land into 10 plots with dividers that are perpendicular to your house. The back of your land borders a creek. You want to spend no more than $7,000 to put a fence around your land except beside the creek and as dividers. The fence you want around your land costs $10,000 per kilometer, while the divider fence costs $20,000 per kilometer. What is the maximum area and dimensions you can enclose measured in feet and square feet, round to four decimals? So, a lot of information going on. So, let's break it down. So, first thing, we're told we have a shape of a rectangle that is adjacent to the back of our yard. Okay. We're also told we're going to divide the land into 10 plots with dividers that are perpendicular to the house. We're also told that you want to spend no more than $7,000. Okay. You're not going to put any fence along the creek, but you are going to put fence up for dividers, and then you're told the cost. All right, so let's draw this out. So let's draw our house. All right, let's bring this over into the middle so we can have some more room to work with. All right, so here's our house. All right, and now we own land, and at the back of the land is a creek. So let's just put our creek right back here. So here's the creek. All right. And then we will put our land. All right. All right. So there's our land. Now it says we want to put fence around our land except at the back of the creek. All right. Sorry, my marker is not wanting to work today. All right. So let's get that put in. So we're going to put fence, so let's denote pink as our fence, all right, so we're going to put fence here, here, and then here, okay, and then we're going to put dividers, and we want to divide this into 10 plots, so we want 10 individual pieces. So. And we're going to use this as dividers, our purple. All right. Two. All right, so we got one, two, three, four plots. Five plots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then ten. Okay. And as it says, we're not putting any fence along the creek. All right. So, with here, oops, sorry about that. So now let's break down some key pieces. So, fence around, well, if you go back to high school geometry, that means perimeter. Well, we have the perimeter formula. Remember, perimeter means add up all of our sides. Well, we're also going to be putting fence for the dividers. Okay. So we have, with this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 lengths and one width. Okay. But among those 11 lengths, so we have 11 lengths one width all right but in those 11 lengths 
in those 11 lengths, we have two fence pieces, two hot pinks right here at the end. And then nine purple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dividers. All right, whereas for our width, we just have one fence, okay? So, now with that, we can set up part of our formula still with this. So we can say, okay, our perimeter is going to equal three fences plus nine dividers. Okay. Now, <clears throat> are we told how big, so are we told how much perimeter? Well, if we look back at our word problem, we're not. We're told we don't want to spend more than $7,000. And then we're told the cost per kilometer. Well, that 7000 is actually going to be part of our perimeter. So, we can use our cost set up here. So, we're going to have our cost is going to be $7,000. All right, so we've got three fences. Well, our fences are $10,000 per kilometer. This would be three times 10,000 fences plus nine times, I think this was $20,000. Oops, too many zeros, sorry about that. All right. And so that reduces down to 7,000 equals 30,000 F plus 180 for our dividers. All right. Now, we need one more formula. Ah, sorry about that. I'm sorry my marker board does not want to play nice this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's look back at our word problem. What can help us? Well, looky here. It says, what is max area and the dimensions? Well, we know the area formula of a rectangle. Area is equal to length times width. Well, our length and width are going to be the fence and will be the fence and the, the D's. So with here. And D. Okay. So we do length by width. Yep. <laughs> All right. Wait, hold up. And the reason it's F times D. Well, let's break it down, and it's okay. It takes a second to really think it through. So yes, our F is this hot pink here on the length, here on the length, here on the width. However, what's going to determine the length's height are these dividers. And so that's why it's our width fence times the dividers. Because the dividers are going to tell us how long is the backyard, whereas our width fence here. Okay? So... <laughs> All right, so now we've started talking about this in our last class. What we have here, as we talked about, between our cost and our area, this is our optimization problem, okay, which is we're solving a system of equations. So we have to use either substitution or set equal. Well, on your homework, yes, they tell you to solve for certain variables and go it that way. On a test or quiz, I don't care. Your homework does it that way, 
because they're trying to grade a million homeworks at once. So, we know this is our cost. So let's solve cost for F. All right. So when we do that, we're going to get F is equal to 7,000 minus 180,000 D all over 30,000. Now, yes, you can reduce this down, which I would recommend to try to make this a little simpler on yourself. So 7,000 over 30,000, well, that just becomes 7 thirtieths minus, and then 180 divided by 30,000 will just be 6D. All right. And so with this, as we started talking about last class, this here tells you how much regular fence is needed based on your dividers. So when you go back in and plug in to try to figure out and answer your questions, you know what each variable is standing for. Now we take this and we plug it into our area formula. So now we get A of D is equal to D times 7 over 30D minus 6D. All right. And this here is called your area model. This tells you the area of your backyard, or the plot of land, the area of your land, based on your dividers. Okay. So if your dividers, oops, and this should not have had a D, that should be just 7 30s. So if your dividers had a length of, say, 20 kilometers, you would plug in 20 and then solve this down and see what you get. Okay. And that would tell you what your area is. So now, what we can do. All right. So now remember, with max, that tells us we find our first derivative and we solve it equal to zero. Okay. Well, we can distribute this through. So we get a of d is equal to negative 6d squared plus 7 thirtieths d. All right, now we take our derivative. That's negative 12d plus 7 thirtieths. All right, now we set it equal to 0, and we solve it. All right, so subtract that 7 thirtieths. All right, and then divide by negative 12. So it's negative 7 over negative 360, because when we do... Because remember, when we divide by 12, we're multiplying by 1 12th. All right, and so that's just 7 3 60ths. Now we got to go back and look at what, what this measure is. Well, our fencing is measured in kilometers. Okay. So your dividers are 7 3 60ths kilometers. Now, to get your fence part, to get your F. All right, so F equals, when we found that to be our 7 thirtieths minus 6 times 7 3 sixtieths. So this is 7 thirtieths. All right, let's see. That'd be 7 sixtieths. And that's the same as 14 sixtieths. So this would be 7 sixtieths kilometers. So this pink part is for your dividers. And this part is for your fence width.
Alright. So now, you've got that. Now we can find our area. Well, area we know is length times width, so we could do D times F. Or we can plug it in, so we could do A of 7 3 60ths equal negative 6 times 7 over 3 60ths squared plus 7 over 30ths times 7 over 3 60ths equal. Alright, so just take your time calculating all this. Alright. Negative 6 times 7 over 360 squared. 7 times. Okay, give me one second. It does not look Alright, and this comes out to 49 over. Forty nine over twenty one thousand six hundred square kilometers is your max area. Well, hold up, and I forgot about this. This is an error. It's okay. We need to check to make sure that this will give us maximum. Okay. So remember, with this, I'm gonna zoom this out just a little bit. So as we discussed, remember. To do this, so remember at this step here, as we showed in the last class, because in our last class we had an example that doesn't work, we need to check that d equal to 7 3 60ths will give us a max. We have to create that number line. 7 over 360. So that's our critical number. So now we use test numbers. So we're going to do A prime of 0 and A prime of 1. Alright, so A prime of 0. Alright, so when we plug in A prime of 0, well we got negative 12D plus that, so that just becomes a positive. And then a prime of 1, all right, that's just going to be a negative. And so that does. So with here, we see we're increasing before 7 3 60s, decreasing. So this is a max. All right. So we have the dimensions that give the max area. are 7 3 60th kilometers by 7 60th make sure that math is right yep yeah 7 60th kilometers with a max area of 49 over 21,000 600 square kilometers now we got one last little thing and you're like oh crud am I not done not quite I don't know about you but I believe a lot of our stuff is sold in square feet or feet there are times depending on the business and location yes they may use kilometers well it says measured in feet and square feet all right so we got to do a little bit of conversions here. All right. So one thing we know, and you can look this up and all, we know one kilometer is equal to one kilometer two feet is thirty-two eight one. Double check that. Oops. Yeah, it's 33,281 feet. 
Okay, so that means one square kilometer. Well, that means we square that 3281. And that will be... Is one o seven six four nine six one square feet. All right. So we know these different increments. All right. So we do some conversions. So remember with here, and this comes from your chemistry, your physics, etc. So since we're trying to go from kilometers to feet, and we know one kilometer is that, we're going to multiply. So this is 7, 360 times 3281. And then we're also going to do 7 over 60 times 3281. And then the same idea for our square feet. So 49 over 21,600 times... All right, and so we calculate all of that. Forty nine over six hundred. All right, and so you get twenty four four twenty, and we said four decimals, so five one three four square feet all right and 3281 times 7 over 60 382.783 three feet this is So, now your dimensions that give the max area are 63.7972 feet by 380, 382.78 three feet all right and then the max area in feet is twenty four thousand four hundred and twenty point five one three four square feet so that's as much land as you can enclose based on this okay all right, so we're told a professor is participating. In... All right, so this is coming from your book. This is what's going to be called an absolute extrema application, and you'll see why as we go through it. But we're told a math professor is participating in an orienteering course. Basically, you're out compassing and hiking through the woods. You're told he can go 300 meters along the trail east and then go 800 meters north. He has a certain pace for when he's on the trail and in the woods. Or what he can do to minimize the distance is cut is walk some on the trail and then cut through the woods. And the problem wants to know what is the path that will get him the minimum time through the woods. Now, in the book and in your homework, it may provide you the picture. Well, here I'm not showing you a picture. But we can draw this picture with all the information given. So we're told we go 300 meters east. Okay? And then we're going 800 meters north. Now I know this is not proportionally drawn correctly. That's okay. That's one thing. Never trust pictures to be drawn to scale. All right. Now, as your problem says, it says he can walk some on the trail. 
So he, go, he can start here and then walk this distance. We don't know, so that's X meters. And then he's going to cut through the woods. All right. So the red part is cutting through the woods. Now, with this, what we know. All right. Well, if you think back to your high school geometry course, with here we've gone from east to north at a right angle. Well, we have a right triangle. So we know leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this is our C. So we know A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Well, here, from this red dot to here, that's not 300. That is 300 minus X. So we got 300 meters minus X all squared plus 800 meters squared is equal to C squared. All right, so that means C is equal to the square root of 90,000 minus 600 X plus X squared plus 640,000. One, two, three, four. All right, and so that is our distance through the woods. And we can simplify that down even further. That'd be 730,000, okay, meters. So he's going to travel X meters and then square root, blah, blah, blah. Now we're also told the pace. Well, when he's on the trail, it's 160 meters per minute. And then when it's um, through the woods, it's 70 meters per minute. This is on the trail. This is in the woods. Now, this is where your high school algebras and physics comes into play, and even chemistry. Well, we are told a distance, and we're told a rate. We don't know time. So we know distance is equal to rate times time. And so that means we will have time is a distance over rate. Well, let's calculate our total time. Well, we're going to have the time traveled on the trail. So that's D1 over R1. And then we're going to have the, tra the traveling time in the woods. So that's D2 over R2. So our total time is our distance of X meters over 160 meters a minute plus the square root of x squared minus 600x plus 730,000 over 70 meters a minute. <laughs> All right. Now, we want to, as the problem says, is minimize. So that means derivative, first derivative equals zero. So we're going to take the derivative of time with respect to x. All right, so that's just 1 one sixtieth plus, well, we know that's 1 seventieth. Well, we know square root is half power, so this is times a half, times x squared minus 600x plus 730,000 to the negative a half times 2x minus 600. All right, so that simplifies down to 1 one sixtieth plus, so we get 1 one seventieth times 2x minus 600 over 2 times the square root. which then just becomes 1 over 1 60th plus, well, 2 can go into each of those, so that's x minus 300 all over 
170 square root. All right. All right, now we have to solve this equal to zero because we want to minimize. So now we set to zero and solve. Now this, as I said, is where your algebra and calculus, your calculus becomes harder because you gotta remember everything from algebra. And there are multiple ways of solving this. Um, one way is you can multiply by your LCD. All right, so our LCD is gonna be both of the denominators times each other. All right, and so we put, excuse me, so we multiply this by LCD, this by LCD, and this by LCD. So we get 170 square root. Plus, all right, now we're going to multiply the 160 through. So 160x minus so 300 times 160 is 48,000. Equals zero. All right, now we isolate the radical. So square root. Eight hundred minus one sixty x over one seventy. All right. Now to get rid of the radical, we square it since we're taking square root. So we square this side, and then we square this side. Whoa, that should be one seven. That should just be seventy. Sorry about that. Sorry, that should be just seventy. So we square that. All right, so we get x squared minus 600x plus 730,000 is equal. All right, so 70 squared should be 4,900. All right, and then we do 4,800 squared. That's two three zero oh, four two three four minus so sixty times forty eight hundred one five three six one two four and one sixty squared is plus twenty five six hundred x squared. All right. Yes, we're getting some big numbers. Don't let these numbers intimidate you. They're just numbers. Now we can multiply by our denominator. Let's get rid of that denominator. That's going to make things a whole heck of a lot easier on us. So we multiply everybody by 4,900. All right, so that gets us 4,900 x squared minus... Two nine four one two three four x all right three five seven seven one two Equals two five six zero zero x squared. X plus. Then we zoom that out just a little bit so we can write it. All right. So now 
We get everything to one side. Like I said, yes, these are big numbers. It's okay. They're just numbers. All right, so we subtract 4,900. Add that 294. And then subtract this. All right, so, so, so 25,600 minus 4,900. All right, so that's 2,700 x squared. Four. All right, now you can reduce this down by 100, which would make calculations go a lot smoother and faster. But we can plug this straight into quadratic formula from here. All right, sorry about that. Let's see, we, let's see, where it is? There it is. So x equals negative negative. Plus or minus the square root. Four square minus four times two o seven o o three five five three nine six four. So one, two, four, two, three, four. All right, one, two, four, two, three, four, minus four, two, four, seven, four, four, three, four, five, three, five, three, nine, six, one, two, three, four. Insert my finger. Right. So you're going to get a very large number. So let's, yeah, let's reduce this by 100 to make this easier um, calculation wise. So the answer is going to be nice. Your calculator just will not be able to compute it cleanly. So since we see they end in at least two zeros, we can pull out 100. So it gives us 207x squared minus 1242x minus 3553961213. Equals zero. All right. Now this will make the calculations go a bit easier here. All right, we'll take off those two zeros, those two zeros, those two zeros, and those two zeros. All right, let's try that again. So, so one, two, four, two, oh, oh, squared minus four times two, oh, seven times three, five, five, three, nine, six, oh, oh. All right. Okay, so we're still getting a, just a tad big number. Get this to come out nicely. Let's see. Give me just one second to get this to simplify down. One, two, four, two, squared. It's four times two oh seven times three five five. There we go. All right, so we get four, four, eight, five, two, four, two, eight, 
oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, all over. And then this will just be 417. All right. So now we calculate each of those. Um, and it does it say where to round to? It does not. Okay. Well, so let's calculate these. Let's see what we get. So parentheses 124200 plus. Oh, second answer. Uh, 417. All right, so we get. 805 so, with here, we're getting 805 meters and two, negative 210 meters. Well, we know we can ignore this because we can't have negative distance. Now... We've got 805 meters. Well, let's go back up to our original problem here. Do, 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 do. So it's saying for our X here, we're traveling 805 meters east. But based on our work problem, our trail's only 300 meters east. That means it's longer. So that means we can't do this. So we can't do this since the trail is only 300 meters east total. And this is why it's called absolute extrema, because you are bounded your x meters has to be between 0 meters and 300 meters okay and so that will tell you where your max or min should occur so since this is outside of it we must use our absolute extrema since that 800 is outside of it and so now what we do is we say okay we do f of 0 and f of 300. Now for here we plug that in. Here our F is the total time. Well that was that X over 160 plus the square root 600 X plus 730. All over 70 okay so here would be 300 over 160 plus square root Hundred squared minus 600 100. And then up here, your x would be 0. So you get square root 730 all over 70, which would come out to be, all right, so 730. So, let's see, so second square root 730. One, two, three, divide by 70. That's 
seconds. And then for here, print say 300 over 160 plus seven square root 300 squared minus 600 times 300 plus. Oops, what am I doing? We get thirteen point three zero three five seven seconds. And so we wanted the minimum time. Well, the minimum is this twelve point two zero five seconds. So what this means, so what this means is you travel zero meters on the trail east and then cut through the woods and you can figure out that distance by doing your square root piece here which we did which is the square root of 730123 which comes out to roughly uh, so zero, so second square root 730, 854 meters, 4.4 4 meters for 12.2057 seconds will be the minimum travel. And so that is a realistic, real-world application based on a problem. All right, one more absolute extrema application, and then we will call it a day. So for this one, we're given a function with a given interval, and it says find all absolute extrema, answers exact form, and round to three decimals. So remember with this, what your absolute extrema does, it's just like finding your max or min. You're going to take your first derivative and solve it equal to zero. And then you're going to get x equal different critical numbers. All right. And then you're going to find which critical numbers are in the interval, in this case negative 5 to 5, and then you're going to do f of negative 5, f of 5, and then f of whatever critical numbers, and you're going to find your extrema from there. <laughs> So, from here, this is just like your quiz you just took. So, this is your exponential rule of derivative. So, remember, this will become f prime of x is equal. All right, so we take the derivative of the exponent. Well, that's chain rule. So, that's going to be 6 times 7x squared plus 3x minus 4 and then times 14x plus 3, all right? So that's the derivative of the exponent. Then we do the natural log of our base, and then we do times the exponential. Let's zoom that out just a little bit. Squared. All right, so that's the first part. Now we solve it equals zero. So 6 times 7x squared plus 3x minus 4 times 14x plus 3 times ln of 7 times 7 to the squared equals zero. All right, well, since these are all multiplied and equal zero, we can separate this. We can say, okay, 6 equals 0. 7x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. 
14x plus 3 equals 0. ln of 7 equals 0. <coughs> and then our 7 to the 3 times 7x squared plus 3x minus 4 all squared equals 0. And now we solve these individually. Well, 6 can never be 0, and ln of 7 can never be 0. So for here, for this one, we use quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. All right, so 3 squared minus 7, or minus 4 times 7 times negative 4 all over 2 times 7. All right. And then here we get x is equal to negative 3 fourteenths. All right, so let's continue to find this. So negative 3 plus or minus. All right, so that's, let's see, 9 minus 4 times 7 times negative 4. So that's 121. Over 14. Okay. So that's equal to negative 3 plus or minus 11 over 14. All right. So we get negative 3 plus 11, which is 8 over 14. So that's 4 sevenths. And then negative 3 minus 11, that's negative 14. So that's negative 1. All right. And then we also have negative 3 fourteenths. All right, so now we look at this one here. Let's bring this bad boy down. All right, so we're solving an exponential. So we take the natural log of both sides. So this becomes 3 times 7x squared plus 3x minus 4 all squared ln of 7 equals ln of 0. Well, we can't take natural log of zero. So these are our critical numbers, and we've got three of them. All right. Now we have to use the endpoints, the negative 5 and 5. So now we do, okay, f of negative 5, f of negative 1, f of negative 3 fourteenths, and then f of 4 sevenths, all right? And so we plug them into our original function. So 7 to the 3 times, I don't even remember what it was, 7x squared, oops, what happened? 7, 3, 7, let's bring these down just a wee bit so we can have some more room to work with. So 7 to the 3 times, so 7 times negative 1 squared um, plus 3x. So plus 3 times negative 1 minus 4 all squared. All right, so we calculate that. Let's see, so 7 to the 3 times... 7 times negative 1 squared is negative 1 minus 4 squared. So that all becomes 1. So negative 1 is 1. All right. All right. So now we repeat. Oh, and we also don't want to forget our endpoints, our 5 and negative 5. So we'll do those as well. So 7 to the 3 times 7 times negative 3 over 14 squared. Plus 3 times negative 3 fourteenths 
is four squared. Three squared. Three times. Right. So this is seven to the four three nine two three over seven eight four, which is roughly seven to the that. Hmm. Well, this is going to be a very large number. Did not mean for that. So on your calculator, you're getting 2.218e to the 47th. So that just means times 10 to the 47th power. So my apologies. On a quiz or test or even your homework, no, they will not be something this funky and crazy. Three times seven times four over seven squared plus four over seven minus four. Okay, that comes out to be zero to the zero power, which is one. All right, and then we got to do negative five and five. So we do f of negative five. So 7 to the 3 times 7 times 8 to 5 squared plus 3. Alright. So 7 to the 3 point the C. 7. Let's see, oops, and that should be a negative 5 there. Negative 5 squared. 3 times negative 5 minus 4. Okay, so this is just going to be too large for your calculator to count, calculate. Okay. And like I said, on a quiz or test, I will pick better numbers that do. I just kind of made this up off the top of my head, seeing what would happen. And then the same thing here. So, based on this, your more than likely your maxes will be at these. So let's make an adjustment to this problem so that we can get something that plays a lot nicer. Let's go between negative 1 and 1. So let's change that. Okay. Actually, yeah. So negative 1 and then 1. So we're going to ignore these right now so we've already got negative one so we can just do f of one okay so 
Okay, and this is still way too large for your calculator. So this is 1e, e, 1.86e91. Okay. So, like I said, on a quiz or test, I'll make sure these play a lot nicer. Um, but based on this, so we want the smallest and the largest. Well, 1.86e to the 91 is bigger than that. So we have an absolute max at 1 comma 1.86 times 10 to the 91st. And then an absolute min at, let's see, so we got a 1, a 1. All right, this occurs in two spots, at 4 sevenths and negative 1. And that is your absolute extrema for this. Like I said, for a quiz or a test, I will make sure you're, you can calculate these and be able to see the answers without anything too horrendous.